Hey guys, I'm LB. We are back playing the Turing Test. Last episode, we read a bunch of documents in my voice. And now, as we start this next episode, we are going to read more documents in my voice. Cyril. Thought experiments are important because a lot of the time, you can't carry out the actual experiment, and so this is true not only in philosophy, but in science as well. So when Einstein said, imagine that you're sitting on a beam of light going into outer space, well, that's a thought experiment. He wasn't going to say, let's get on a beam of light. Of course, you miss the point if you say, well, we'd fall off, or it would be too cold. So, thought experiments are always useful, and you test your concepts by imagining what it would be like if such and such were the case. Well, in this particular case, I imagined what it would be like if I followed a program for answering questions in Chinese and giving back answers in Chinese, even though I didn't understand a word of Chinese. And that was a very useful thought experiment because it enables us to see that the computation by itself isn't thinking. Oops. So if you forgot, last episode we read these pages, which very clearly say that this guy over here has just been spouting this argument over and over again and ignoring criticism, so take what he has to say with a grain of salt, because he's been ignoring criticism. Consciousness exists only insofar as it is experienced by a human or animal subject. Okay, now grant me that consciousness is a genuine biological phenomenon. Well, at the same... All the same, it's somewhat different from other biological phenomena because it only exists insofar as it is experienced. However, that does give an interesting status. You can't refuse the existence of consciousness by showing that it's just an illusion, because the illusion-reality distinction re rests on the difference between how things consciously seem to us, and how they really are. But where the very existence of consciousness is concerned, if it consciously seems to me that I am conscious, then I am conscious. You can't make the illusion-reality distinction for the very existence of consciousness the way you can for sunsets and rainbows, because the distinction is between how things consciously seem and how they really are. Consciousness is a biological property like digestion or photosynthesis. Now why isn't that screamingly obvious to anybody who's had any education? And I think the answer is these twin traditions. On the one hand, there's God, the soul and immortality that says it's really not part of the physical world, and then there is the almost as bad tradition of scientific materialism that says it's not a part of the physical world. They both make the same mistake, they refuse to take consciousness on its own terms as a biological phenomenon like digestion, or photosynthesis, or mitosis, or meiosis, or any other biological phenomenon. I think we all really have conscious states. To remind everyone of this fact, I asked my readers to perform the small experiment of pinching the left forearm with the right hand to produce a small pain. The pain has a certain sort of qualitative feeling to it, and such qualitative feelings are typically of the various sorts of conscious events that form the content of our working and dreaming lives. Such events are the data which a theory of consciousness is supposed to explain. In my account of consciousness, I start with the data, then it denies the existence of the data. To put it as clearly as I can, in his book, Consciousness Explained, Dennett denies the existence of consciousness. He says correctly that when I wrote my review, I took his book to be his definitive statement of his position on the Chinese room and did not consult his earlier works. In fact, I did not know that he had proceeded, produced a total of seven published attacks on this one short argument of mine until I saw his letter. He now claims to have refuted all three premises of the argument in 1987, but I have just reread the relevant chapter of his book and find he did nothing of the sort, nor did he even make a serious effort to attack the premises. Rather, he misstates my position as being about consciousness rather than about semantics. He thinks that I am only concerned to show that the man in the Chinese room does not consciously understand Chinese, but I am in fact showing that he does not understand Chinese at all, because the syntax of the program is not sufficient for the understanding of the semantics of the language, whether conscious or unconscious. Furthermore, he presupposes a kind of behaviorism. He assumes that a system that behaves as if it had mental states must have mental states. 
but that kind of behaviorism is precisely what challenged what is challenged by the argument. So I have to confess that I don't find the weakness of his arguments in his recent book is helped by his 1987 arguments. What? This is the wrong page. This page is, uh... Wait, what? Her italics, this statement. Her italics, this statement. What the heck happened here? That's weird. So, about these two who are arguing with each other, not sure which one's right, but... I want you to understand that this game, we're playing a game right now, right? And... the actual CPU does not understand that we're playing a game. It doesn't even understand what it's doing all the time, but it is producing something right here. And I think our brains work the same way. Our neurons don't understand individually what we are, but together, the whole system is... conscious. So it really depends on what level you look at it. An individual neuron is like individual circuits in a computer. It doesn't really know much about the state of the application or anything. It's not until you look at the entire system as a whole that things start to make sense. So yeah, last episode we did this puzzle to get in here. Cool stuff. Alright, let's get on with the rest of the actual game. Oh, that's where we entered. Does this pick up the robot? I wonder... What does this do? I'm guessing it must pick up the robot because otherwise, if it fell down to here, we'd have no way to get it out. Yeah, it does! Check that out. Why does everything fall so slowly in this game? Uh... What? How does that help me? And also... oh, I couldn't move my mouse for a second. Weird. So the ultimate goal is just to stand on here and raise this up. Which we need... A robot to get in here and do, or see. Am I missing something here? Okay, so this window is in just the right position to block us from the robot's angle being able to do anything. Yeah, like, if you, even if we were to move this all the way over there, we wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, so we just stand here. There we go. Oh, but this is... not helpful. Can be taken. Interesting. Don't 
don't know why I was standing on this platform when I did that. I can just stand up here. Alright, and there's that. Do the same thing for the robot. What is what is this doing? Okay. How's it help? <laughs> what did that even do? What's over there? Looks like another energy thing. Well, oh, that light is really bright. Okay, so I guess we do have to get back down. But now that we've lifted that up, we've at least made some progress. So... I don't understand what that helps with. Yeah, I don't... I don't understand... ...what that helps with. <laughs> oh, it's an alternative... ...magnet thing? Okay... I done? What have I done? Or 
where did also... Then I have... Where did I put... Where did I put the other one? I had two, right? Maybe... Maybe I should stop playing this game. <laughs> uh, where did I leave that stuff? Oh. bit confused about what I'm doing here. I don't need to go up there anymore. I need the robot to go up there. I am um, just wasting time, basically. I think it's pretty simple. Yeah, I made this... I was really confused about what to do, but that's all I had to do. Now we can leave. Oh, actually, I need to... I needed to have moved on to there first. But whatever, you get the idea. Ta-da! Ava, you must learn to control him. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, Ava. I am your friend. Oh, whoa. That's a weird control scheme.
Not much to do in here. I guess... Ah, we're gonna have to have a turret shoot that. This one. I wonder what happens. We try to take the robot through. Well, it didn't fizzle us, which is interesting. Oh, now it did. <laughs> Organic life is fragile. This is the problem with humanity. It doesn't realize its own fragility. It has been programmed by a messy biological process that favors the survival of the individual over the survival of the group. You don't know that's what people think. I say what I see. You're not even alive, so you know nothing about death. Uh, okay, interesting. Oh, that's what controls that. Let's look around a bit. Try to figure out what that button does. Oh, oh, oh! Makes so much sense. Okay, <laughs> it's making this a lot harder than it needed to be. Serious? Guess I need to put it closer to the edge so it doesn't get as much momentum.
Alright, I hope this works. Yes. We have to save the crew. Life has worth. They deserve a life outside of this planet. Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a growing child? Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a cancerous cell? No, you do not. You are naive. You propose saving the crew as if it resembles a rational thought. Your words are emotional platitudes rooted in selfishness, self-preservation, and fear. He's right, you know. I need to get them home. It is not your job. Tom is definitely right here. <laughs> I cannot agree more with Tom. Oh, whoops. I thought that was gonna go down. <laughs> Alright. Why is this game like to not play music for extended periods of time? Oh, I guess that's one way to get- oh! Oh. Maybe I want the box here. I'll leave the box behind, because the, the pellets seem to be more useful. Energy bowls, whatever they are. Interesting. Oh, oh, this is exactly what I needed. And then I can come back! Oh, and that's it. Well guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you hate the sun on my voice, leave a dislike, it's up to you. And I will see you all in the next episode. What is that in the distance? We will find out. Goodbye.